All right, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I wanna do another color grading breakdown on how I achieved the look for this short sequence. When it feels scary to jump, Ian, that is exactly when you jump. Otherwise, you end up staying in the same place your whole life. And that I can't do. So I should make a disclaimer that I'm not a professional colorist, so I'm just learning as I go. But without further ado, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve. All right, so I should mention that I'm working in a color managed timeline. So what I wanna start with is, I wanna start by going into the timeline section of the nodes in the color space rather than the clip section. Within the timeline section, we're gonna be affecting the entire timeline. So every single clip that is within the timeline, it just speeds up the color grading process, allows us to establish a base grade for all of our clips and then we can fine tune it in the clip section afterwards. So we're gonna work a little bit backwards today and I'll show you what I mean. So to start things off, what I wanna do is create eight serial nodes. To do that, you can just do option S, just press that repeatedly. All right, so let's just get this a little bit organized here. Bring that down. And so, like I said, we're gonna start backwards. So we're going to start actually here in the second last node. And what I want to do here is I want to drag and drop a color space transform. So I'm going to label this first as our out. And then we're going to go to the effects panel and we will search up color space transform. And let's drag and drop that there. So what you want to do is you want to first select your input color space and your input gamma that you use to actually shoot these clips. So whatever color space you used in camera, that's what you're gonna to wanna to select. So for me, I was shooting on a Sony camera, so I'm gonna select Sony S Gamma 3 Cine as our color space, and the input gamma is going to be S Log 3. Then for our output color space, what we wanna do is we wanna select Rec. 709, and for the output gamma, we want to select Cineon Film Log, and I'll explain why we wanna select Cineon Film Log in a second here. So after that, that's all we have to do there. Then we will go to our last node. So our last node is probably going to be the easiest node in the entire node tree. So with this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just use one of the DaVinci Resolve film LUTs. And I personally like the Kodak 2383D55. So we're gonna apply that and it just does an excellent job of emulating film print. So the reason why we selected to use the Cineon film log is because the Kodak 2383 LUTs are meant to be paired with a gamma of Cineon film log. So that's just what complements them best. All right, so next what we wanna do is we want to create a contrast curve. So we wanna reintroduce some of the contrast back into our image. And we wanna add more depth to the image. What we wanna do is we wanna first label this node as contrast curve. And then we're gonna to go to our curves tab here. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger here. So I'm just gonna do the expand button. What I wanna do is I want to add a control point first in the bottom left hand quadrant here, just right down here. So this is gonna be dealing with our shadows. And then I'm gonna also add a control point in the top right quadrant as well. So that'll, that'll be dealing more with the highlights and midtones. Okay, so for the control point that's in the shadows, what I wanna do is I wanna just drag it down and to the left a little bit, just adding a little bit more depth to our shadows here. And then this is also creating a toe for our curve. And then for the highlights, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drag it up and to the right slightly. Just kind of adding a bit of a pop to our highlights and midtones. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take this far left control point here in the shadows, and I'm just gonna bring it up ever so slightly. And this is gonna prevent our shadows from actually clipping. There's nothing worse than seeing an image with shadows that are clipping. And then we can kind of adjust and play around with it as we see fit. And if you're worried about the highlights clipping as well, you can do the exact same thing. And so I'm gonna turn on our editable splines here and just create more of a curve and straighten out this line here. All right, so we'll exit out of the curves here. So already you can see it's creating a lot more depth to our image and it's adding significant contrast to the shadows without them actually clipping. All right, so moving on to the next node. This one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add even more 
dimensionality to the image and make the image pop. So with this, we're gonna do our split toning. So what this does is it actually adds that color separation to our image, making our subject seem as if it's more front and center and our shadows seem like they're further back. And so the way we're gonna do that is we are gonna make our shadows a little bit more on the cyan side and then we're gonna add a little bit of a warmth to our midtones and our highlights. And instinctively, the human eye naturally thinks of shadows that are slightly more blue or cyan as being further away. So it's just gonna create that dimensionality to our image and make it look more cinematic. So to do that, we're gonna stay in the curves panel here. And what we are going to do is we're gonna work with the individual curves. So the green, the red, and the blue curves. So to do that, we're just gonna unlink them here. And let's start with the blue curve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a control point somewhere down here in the shadows and then I'm just gonna push it up ever so slightly. And then I will also add another control point just a little bit further up. And I'm gonna hold down Alt and bring it to the line here. And so then it will, by holding down Alt, it just locks it in place here and you can just adjust it as you see fit. All right, so that's, that's probably good there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to our green curve. And we're gonna do the similar thing, but just slightly less. We're just gonna shift it up there and then Again, add another control point, bring it down to the same place where the blue control point is on the line. And with this, what we wanna do is we wanna make it a bit more cyan. Next, what we wanna do is we wanna work with the red curve. And the red curve, as I mentioned, is gonna add some warmth to our image in the midtones and highlights. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select a control point somewhere along here, and we're just gonna push it up ever so slightly, adding another control point further down around the same place where the other control points for the green and blue are, locking it onto the line. And so you can see that already adds quite a bit of dimensionality to our image, really putting more emphasis on certain features of our subject. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually reduce the amount of the red curve here. And I'm just gonna do that by the, using this slider here. It's just a little too much. Bring it down ever so slightly there, perfect. We don't want the red curve spilling into our shadows. So that's why we're putting the control point there and vice versa. We don't want the blue and green curves to spill into our midtones and highlights too much. So we're putting the control point there. All right, so moving on to the next node. The next node is going to be our palette. So it's where we can fine tune, adjust some of the specific colors in our shot. And so let's first just name that as palette. Perfect, all right. And with this, we're gonna be working in the hue versus tabs here. So we're gonna start things off in our hue versus hue. All right, so first I'm just gonna target the blues a little bit, and I'm just gonna change the color of that ever so slightly, just bringing it down. And then we're gonna focus a little bit on the skin tones here. And I just wanna bring that down, make it a little bit more to the orange side of things here, rather than red. And then moving on to our hue versus saturation. With this, what I want to do is I want to decrease the saturation of our blues first. I like subtler blues. So we're just gonna bring that down there to about there, that value there. And then I also want to decrease the saturation of our skin tones ever so slightly. Perfect, so that's, that's about good there. I might actually introduce a little bit more saturation back into the blues. It's looking a little too unsaturated there. All right, and then we'll go into the hue versus luminance here. I wanna add a little bit more luminance into the blues, brightening it up ever so slightly. And then also in the skin tones here, I want to just add a little bit more pop. With the skin tones, I'm just gonna bring them actually down a little bit and then bring it up here in some of the darker skin tones there. All right, so our next node is gonna be titled Wash. And this is gonna basically allow us to refine our film look for our image. And it's gonna provide a way of subtly desaturating our image in a way that would be similar to what film would look like. And instead of just using the saturation slider as lots of people tend to do. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into the curves tab again, and we're gonna go to the saturation versus saturation curve. And what we wanna do is we wanna add a control point first 
in the right hand quadrant and we're going to bring it down all the way and we're going to bring down this far right control point as well and then let's add a control point in the left hand quadrant here and just bring it up to the line there and then we're going to slide this control point all the way over and so then we can basically just fine tune adjust it to subtly desaturate our image until we reach that desired look so that's that's pretty good I'm, I'm happy with that there we can always come back and readjust it if need be second last node here in our timeline adjustments this one is going to be kelvin and so we're adjusting the color temperature. I didn't do any technical adjustments here. I just went for the easiest way. It might not be the right way, but I just used the temperature slider for this to adjust our color temperature. And so I wanna bring it down. I wanna make it a lot cooler. So I bring it down to about 370 here. And that's good for that node. That's, yeah, very simple. So our final node here in our timeline node tree is going to be dedicated to our exposure. And so with this, what I did was I actually just used the offset wheel and I just brought that down to, yeah, I'll bring it down to about 24. All right, so yeah, obviously the image isn't looking amazing yet, but this provides a solid base grade for our entire timeline. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on over to the clip level up here. And this is where we're gonna do our fine tune adjustments to all our individual clips. All right, so with this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work forwards rather than backwards as we did in the previous one. For some instances, you might want to add an exposure node, but for this one, I didn't. I chose not to do any sort of additional exposure adjustments on the clip level, but it's something that you might want to consider for your clip. So I first started off with a look adjustment node. So this is where we will refine our look and make specific micro adjustments to better fit the grade that we're looking to achieve for our given project. And so with this node, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the color wheels. And so we're going to mainly just be looking at our lift and our gamma wheel. And so first things first, we can notice there's a lot of blue in the image. So I want to go to my lift wheel and I want to reduce the blue. So I want to bring it down to negative 0.02. And so I'm also going to add a touch of green. So I'm going to bring that up to 0.01. And then moving on to the gamma wheel, what we want to do is we want to bring the blue down slightly to negative zero. And then I want to bring the green down as so we're going to bring it down to negative 0.01 and then I'm also going to bring down the red to negative zero. So that's pretty much all for the look adjustment here. As you can see we just kind of got rid of some of that blue that was in our image and it's still obviously the skin tones are a bit too on the green side but in the next nodes what we're going to do is we're going to fine tune adjust our skin tones. So we're going to create another serial node and we're gonna actually do a parallel node. And so as I mentioned in my previous video, I like to do two separate nodes for my skin tone adjustments. The first one is gonna be used for the qualifier and the second one is gonna be used for the actual adjustments. And so what I wanna do is I wanna attach the key output of the qualifier node to the key input of our adjustment node. And so that way it'll translate the information from our qualifier node to our adjustment node. It's obviously not necessary, but it's just something that I personally like to do. So let's just first label this as skin, and then let's go to our qualifier tool and we're gonna select our skin tones here. So we just do shift H to see our selection. So we're gonna add a little bit of blur radius. So we're gonna bring it up to uh, about 32. And then we're gonna just do the post filter up to 13 here, just to refine our selection a little bit more and not make it as drastic. So then let's go to our adjustment node here. And we're just gonna be working in our hue versus hue curve. So let's select the skin tones here. And we're gonna be looking at our vector scope. So you wanna make sure that in the settings for the vector scope, you have show skin tone indicator selected. So that'll just draw that nice line here where you can tell if your colors are landing on there, you've nailed your skin tone. So that's about in the realm of orange right there. As you can see, we're pretty good with our skin tones. I'm just gonna bring it up ever so slightly. Yeah, it just kind of gets rid of a little bit of the green hue that was still in our skin tones and just makes it seem a little bit more natural. Yeah, these are just micro adjustments. So you might have to adjust it more according to your shot, but 
I'm pretty happy with how it looks right here. Next, let's uh, create another serial node. And so with this one, we're gonna be creating our power window. So we're gonna just sculpt our image a little bit more, just adding a little bit more dimensionality to it and emphasizing certain elements. With this, we're gonna start with creating uh, oval power window. And I should mention with these power windows, you want to really take into account which way the light is hitting the subject. And you wanna basically have your power windows complement how the light is hitting the subject. And we wanna really soften it quite a bit just to make it seem natural. Essentially by adding these power windows, you are basically adding in negative fill in post. So you wanna make it seem very gradual and natural when you're doing it. And, and I wanna also invert this oval. So it's just focusing on the outside here. Then we'll go over to our color wheels and I just brought the gamma down to about negative 0.04. So as you can see, that's already just kind of putting a little bit more emphasis on our subject's face. I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna add one more node here. With this one, I'm gonna do a gradient. And so we're just gonna place our gradient just down here. And you can just press Shift H, Shift -H to see your selection, see where the gradient is actually gonna be hitting. And what I wanna do with this is I want to bring our gamma down to about negative 0.03 and our offset down to about 22. It's a very gradual, like soft negative fill here. But again, it just kinda of forces your eye up to the top right hand quadrant where our subject's face is. And so then after we've created these two power windows, what I like to do is I like to just basically create a compound node for them just to clean up our node tree. We'll just label it as our windows. Perfect, all right. And then the following two nodes are completely optional. So with this one, what I wanna do is I wanna add some halation to our image. And again, it's just a stylistic preference. You can choose to opt out from it or you can choose to use it, it's up to you. And it's gonna be very subtle. So what I wanna do is I want to bring threshold up to about 0.229. And I want to then also bring film saturation level up to about yeah 2.16. And then we're gonna leave the strength as is. We're gonna bring the spread slightly up to 0.5. So as you can see, like it's completely a stylistic preference whether you want to use it or not. Um, I just sometimes like the effect. And then our final node is gonna be dedicated to film grain. So let's add the DaVinci Resolve film grain in our effects panel here. I just want it to be pretty subtle. So I'm just gonna reduce the grain size quite a bit down to point, yeah, 0.257. Subtle texture basically added to our image. And let's label that node. I'm pretty happy with that look there. We'll just go before and then after, before and after. So yeah, just kinda, creates a dark moody film look basically for our sports sequence here. All right, so that's all for this color grading tutorial. Let me know if you guys enjoy this style of video and hopefully you learned something and are able to apply this color grade to a project that you're working on. And also just drop a comment if you have any questions about why I did specific things in the grade. Might be able to answer, might not, hopefully I can, but I'll see you guys in the next video, bye.